Now, once we have done this, now come to this situation. In how much time a 600 meter long train is traveling at a, uh, traveling at a speed 90 km per hour can cross an electric pole and can cross a man running at a speed 80, 80 km per hour. Okay. Now here, the distance or the length is 600 meters. So let's do one thing. First, convert the speed of train. Let's call S is the speed of train. So 90 ST is the speed of, or let's say S, just S is the speed of train. So speed of train is 90 km per hour. I'm sure you can memorize or you can recall it is 90 km per hour, so 19 to 5 by 18, so 25 meter per second. Speed of man, as and when necessary, let, let's call it SM, that is 18 km per hour, hence it is 5 meter per second. But for that electric pole, we don't require anything. Okay, first let's do the question of electric pole. What is the meaning of the situation? Look at this very carefully. Suppose this is the pole. The pole doesn't move, right? The train comes. First, let's try to understand what is the meaning of the question. What do they want to know? What they want to know is find the time taken for by the train. This is the train to cross this pole. Now see, the pole doesn't move. When will you count or how will you count the time for the train to cross the pole? Okay, look at this. So train is coming, train is coming, train is coming. When the train reaches in this position where the head of the train or the engine of the train is just touching the electric pole or just by the side of the electric pole, at that time you start your counting. So I'll say start the counting, let the train pass through and when the end of the train passes electric pole, at that moment you stop your counting. So from this position, to this position. Alright, so the position of beginning of the train by the side of electric pole, then train moves ahead, pole stays at its own point. Okay, I repeat, pole stays at this point, train comes when the train's head position, head point or first point touches the electric pole, you start counting. When the train's last point touches the electric pole, stop counting. So the duration in this situation, the duration in this process, is the time taken by the train to cross the pole. Now see, what is the distance traveled by the train? The distance traveled by the train is its own length, right? From this position to this position. So it has traveled its own length. So remember, whenever a train has to cross a simple point, it covers its own length. That's it. So let's take the situation first, electric pole. Let me draw a pole. This is the pole, let's say this is the pole which is fixed. Now this is the train, let's make it a funny train, bullet train. Now the length of the train is 600 meters, the speed is 25 meter per second. We have already discussed that to cross a pole, it just needs to cover its own length. It has to start from here, you know, then this nose is here up to this situation. All right, so, I'll, so this is the train. I'll draw another situation wherein I can show that this from this position to this position, right? The time taken in going from this to this position is the time taken by train to cross the pole. So it has traveled its own length. So the time taken will be equal to length of train divided by speed of train. So it is equal to 600 by 25, which is 24 seconds. So 600 meters divided by 25 meter per second. So it is 24 seconds. So the train will cross an electric pole in just 24 seconds. So remember that to cross an electric pole, the train needs to travel its own length. So the time taken will be its own length divided by its own speed. Now the second case. Now what is the meaning of second case? The meaning of second case is it's like the pole has started moving. I mean, there's no pole. Instead of pole, now there is a man. Right? So now what will be the situation? Let's see. This is the train. Alright. This is 600 meters. Speed is 25 meters per second. And there is a man. Okay. Uh, a smiling man. Now the first case. If he's moving in opposite direction. So the train is going in this direction. The man is coming in this direction. 
speed of the train is 25 meter per second, speed of the man is 5 meter per second. Now you see both of them are contributing towards crossing. In this situation, the pole was not doing anything. The entire work was done by the train. Here, the man is also helping the train to cross. So effectively, what we have to consider is relative speed. So in this case, the time taken will be equal to. Now see, the distance travelled will still be the same. It is just that this was the pole. Train came here, we started counting, we stopped counting. Now in this case, pole is also moving. Look at my hand. My, initially, for case of pole, my left hand was not moving. Only the right hand, that was the train, was moving. But in case of man, my left hand is also moving, the right hand is also moving. So now the time taken will reduce. Okay. So the time taken will be, why will it reduce? Because they are moving in opposite direction, so the speed will get added. So the time taken will be equal to, but the distance travelled is still the same. Right? Only the length of the train divided by speed of, so this is the first part, speed of train plus speed of man. This is opposite direction. So it is 600 divided by 25 plus 5, which is 600 by 30, which is 20 seconds. Then in case of same direction, what will happen in case of same direction? Uh, uh, if the man is moving in this direction, now what is happening? This is for A and this is for B. If the man is moving in this direction, now you see, is, is the train is behind the man. Now the man is not contributing, he is actually opposing the crossing process. Okay. So in this case, the effective speed will reduce. Okay. So in this case, time taken will be equal to length of the train, but the distance travelled is still the same. Opposite uh, 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 relative speed will change. So speed of train minus speed of man. So this will become 600 divided by 25 minus 5, which is 600 divided by 20, which is 30 seconds. So remember, so when the when the man is when the man and train are moving in opposite direction, the speeds will get added. So time taken will be length of the train divided by added speeds. Added speed. If the train and the man are moving in same direction, then the speed, the effective speed will reduce. The effective effort will reduce. So we have to take the difference of speeds as the relative speed. To find the time, divide the length of the train. The distance traveled is still the same, only the length of the train divided by the relative speed. Alright.